Whether you think about learning a new language or simply picking up a skill, a lot of us may assume that trying to get as many minutes or hours into learning all at once might help. But the more we cram, the less we tend to remember. And for anyone who has had last minute cramming sessions before a university exam, know that no matter how much information we try to stuff in our heads, we won't remember everything. In fact, the less we spend on trying to learn everything at once, and instead space out our study sessions across multiple days in smaller bites, the better we actually will learn. This method plays on what is known as the spacing effect. The act of spacing out our study sessions to increase recall and information input is a technique that many language learners call spaced repetition. First identified by the German psychologist Ermann Ebbinghaus, the spacing effect has been noted to help prevent forgetting information easily, as Ebbinghaus found that an increase in time intervals between each period of recall reduces the probability of forgetting. In his most prominent work, Forgetting Curves, Ebbinghaus found that retaining memories of new information dropped drastically in the initial 20 minutes of input, yet after a day or so, the percentage of information retained leveled off. What this means is that if you intentionally space out learning something over multiple sessions across multiple days, the likeliness of you forgetting will be much slimmer as the days go by. This is why cramming as much information as possible over a single period is not effective. Further supported by countless studies on recognition, cued recall, and free recall, the spacing effect has several explanations as to why it makes it such an effective way to learn. For one, there is something called semantic priming. This explanation refers to the process of associating a specific word with the previous one learned. This helps to absorb the information better. Studies found that when it comes to mask repetition learning, there is a huge reduction in semantic processing as the first word is often primed with the mental representation. The more words you then try to cram into your brain at once, the less effective that processing becomes because simply put, there are too many mental representations floating around in your brain. And as we talked about in another video, to reduce as much cognitive load, our brains try to filter out as much unimportant information out there, so it ultimately needs to pick and choose in a process called selective filtering. There's also something called deficient processing. This explanation on memory notes that our brains do not pay much attention to the later representations of information that appear after the first few initial items. This is particularly true when it comes to cued memory tasks. The efficient processing view may lend itself to the idea of another cognitive bias known as the serial position effect. This is where we have less chance to remember things that occur in between instead of the ones that are beginning or end. While generally the spacing effect can be a great way to learn, not every task is made equal. Depending on the area of domain expertise or complexity of the skill, it's important to keep in mind that the spacing effect may not have as much advantage for some. As one study showed, when it came to a task revolving around airplane control simulation, the effect size for spacing was relatively small. This implies that for this given task, spacing out the learning sessions were not worthwhile. However, when it came to spacing out learning for surgical skills, there were many benefits to be seen. If this video is highlighting anything, it's that learning is not something that comes naturally, but is something we need to do intentionally. The spacing effect is a powerful cognitive bias that can work to our advantage the moment we become aware of it. By effectively utilizing the spacing effect, we can learn things faster, better, and generally improve our lives whether that be at school, at work, or simply for personal development. One of the most common ways that the spacing effect is utilized in learning is via apps such as Anki or Quizlet. You may know these apps because they have been recommended by language learners so far. These are tools that help people integrate space repetition to learning vocabulary or concepts via digital cue cards. It provides schedules for the user to follow all the while not taking too much time out of the day in that single session. It ensures consistency and a sense of stickiness to learning. Another way to make sure we apply the spacing effect to learning is to consciously make sure to schedule a period for review. Just as seen in this graph earlier regarding Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve, the percentage of information retained falls off drastically within the first few hours. 
While it does relatively even out after several days, there is still a slight decline, meaning that the less we spend on reviewing the information, the more likely we'll forget. Remember, learning is a process, not an act. New ideas take time to be etched into our long-term neural pathways. Simply stuffing our brains with as much information at a given time and then moving on will never do our minds justice. Even if a single study session is shorter but spaced out across multiple days consistently with review, this is significantly more effective in learning than having fewer but longer intense sessions. With that in mind, the next time you attempt to learn anything at all, keep the spacing effect in mind and see how well you retain everything. As mentioned in this video, besides the spacing effect, the serial position effect is another mental trick to be conscious of, as being aware of this can help to improve learning and memory. To get more information about the serial position effect and why it matters, watch the next video and remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this.